from the edge of the concrete back four feet is going to be here so we're going to cut out that and we're going to pour it right like so okay this pre-existing slab is four inches and so we're going to need to bust out the slab so that we can get to a minimum six but the manufacturer would like ten so that's going to come out all this area here and then we're going to extend it back so that we have on center a four foot by four foot slab 10 inches thick with number five rebar don't forget that you'll need to expose a considerable amount of rebar we're going to actually open this hole up a little bit farther here like this so that we can bond that chair to the shell of the swimming pool once you've hammered back and found the actual pour for the pool you can measure again uh, you're gonna have to go drill this way okay and put some rebar in there for strength and uh, there's our 10 inches right there all right once you uh, are done putting the finishing touches on your home you're going to use a couple of these guys to put at the base of the 4x4 pad. Now this is not to scale, we're just using this so that you guys can kind of see as best as possible how to keep the rebar number 5 off the bottom. Okay, And then you're going to pancake another level up and you want to make sure that you do not get too close to the surface of your pour. Stay several inches down below the surface of your concrete. Um, otherwise you could end up into some quality control problems as far as spalling goes. And that's the process of your metal rusting over time. Um, really damage your concrete. And it can end up uh, discoloring the surface of the concrete and cracking it, which you definitely don't want. You may want to stage several bags of concrete at the end of this particular pour. Again, four foot by four foot, not from the edge of the coping, but from the inside edge of the bond beam. That's where your four foot mark goes all the way back. So you'll have four feet from your cut to the bond beam, not to the edge of your coping. And then we'll get you a final count on the concrete. You want to make sure that when you choose your concrete, just use a basic concrete. You don't want to go with a fast setting concrete. Going with a fast setting concrete uh, could be counterproductive because uh, it can set up faster than you can pour it and mix it and all that sort of stuff. So make sure that you stick with a, a real basic concrete minimum uh, PSI of 2500 and you should be good. We got Clint over here and Chino and Nacho over here. It would not be possible without these guys. These guys are awesome. That's the type of bonding wire you're going to want. Another thing that you want to just be certain about as you're um, choosing your bonding lug, you want to make sure that it is approved for rebar, okay? For bonding to rebar. There's different types of lugs. You wanna make sure that you've got the kind that are approved for rebar and uh, scuff it up nice and good, make a good contact and, and then uh, run your bonding wire over. It's gonna connect into the side of your lug here. And by the way, um, as you're laying the, the metal down for your slab, it wants to be three inches off the bottom then you're going to do another metal grid just like this one, but you want to make sure that you stay two inches below the top of your concrete, two and a half inches. You don't want to get too close to the surface of your concrete because you can run into some problems. So again, three inches off the bottom, two inches away from the top, and you're good to go. Tie your anchor 
so that it is flush with your finished tile. Not with the top of the concrete, but where your tile is going to be. And then run your bonding wire over it and make it nice and fast to that lug down there. And we're going to go straight across there. And you want to make sure that that anchor, yeah, there you go, touches the bottom of that level perfectly. Um, and then the next step is, as the concrete is hardening around this, you want to have two levels vertical on a piece of pipe. An uh, inch and a quarter PVC will fit down inside that shaft and you keep it perfectly level. If it is not perfectly level, you're going to have a major problem on your hands when that concrete hardens up. So make sure that you've got two levels and you've got a good attention to that detail as the concrete is going off. Okay, so regarding the uh, concrete bags, uh, we picked up 38 and for this pad, four by four by 10 inches deep, we were exactly, uh, we were at 34 bags so minimally, you will want to have 36 bags with you. Make sure that you always have 36 bags. Otherwise, you may come up short. 34 worked great for us. All right. So we've got our level down to make sure that we're at the exact right height coming up out of the concrete. We got our neutral bubble there and our neutral bubble there. In fact, this one looks like it could come back just a little hair. Yeah, right around in there. There's a little bit of slop inside of the shaft for the chair, so it'll be all right. But you want to make sure that you are as perfect as perfect can be. Well, I was, and then... All right. Uh, okay. Let's take that uh, that um, level and slide it over just slightly. A little bit more. Yeah. Nice. Right there. And right there. And I think we're good. We're gonna let it sit, and we'll keep checking it every couple minutes. Yeah. We gotta we gotta keep up with our quality control. We cannot have uh, wind damage occurring here. You might find that this hole is right underneath the main body of the lift. And if that's the case, you set the lift, hook up your battery pack, and then you can battery pack and you can swing it out of the way just briefly. And then you can mark your hole. Okay, we're using a, an upright core drill. You don't have to use such a big core drill, but for us, uh, it just makes it a lot easier. Make sure that you're going straight down. So that's gonna have to be adjusted a little bit. And uh, you want to make sure that the X that marks the spot is right in the center of your hole. And then you can start drilling. And you're going to need to irrigate. So you'll want to have somebody with a hose and, and irrigate while you're drilling. This drill here uh, comes complete with a, a vacuum that keeps it sucked down to the concrete and a hose for irrigation. After your concrete sets and you come back the next day, to put the uh, chair down into the anchor, you might find that you get some material that comes up through the bottom and uh, you want to have a wet dry vac and a long flathead screwdriver that you can kind of chip it out. <coughs> Bring a hammer with you and then you're ready to set the chair down into the uh, main anchor. At that point you can mark your second port and core drill that at an inch and a half. Alright, we've got the hole dug and we used the uh, Propoxy 300 quick set and uh, it's an anchoring epoxy and there we go. Next is the tiler will come in and take care of all of that. This is Noah with the pool, right? I'm, show I'm demonstrating how this electric chair thing <laughs> also, my haircut got my dad kicked out of the house. Yeah.
Fulbright, professional institution of pool care gone bad. Hey, all right, that's it.